there's a question people might ask. Okay, why privacy? Why do you care so much about privacy? You know, like, um, isn't scalability more important, or crypto kitties, or ICOs, or whatever? And uh, and this is really a fundamental question about what the point of Bitcoin is. So a lot of people have very big aspirations that Bitcoin might replace Mastercard or Visa or all these things, and maybe that's true. My perspective on Bitcoin is that fundamentally, Bitcoin is financial asylum, right? The, the one promise we make, the only promise we make, the, 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 the promise that has to be kept is that no matter what any central institution, government, financial institution, bank, says against you, if you want to, to engage in commerce, you have that privilege, you have that right. And we will make sure it happens, right? That is sort of the spirit of Bitcoin and, 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 and that censorship resistance, the resistance to being censored by any central inst institution is that promise we have to make and we have to stand by. And so from that perspective, what Bitcoin really is, is Bi Bitcoin is financial asylum. It is asylum like America is, a, is an asylum. And, um, Possibly one of my favorite poems is, in fact, this poem here. Um, it's the end of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the poem that is uh, um, uh, written right on the uh, Lady Liberty. Keep ancient lands your story pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to, be f to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my light beside the golden door. This is how I think about Bitcoin. When I, I work in Bitcoin, I'm not thinking about giving uh, necessarily freedom to someone in you know, America or Canada. Canada is where I'm from. We have um, incredible freedoms there. I think to myself, who needs this financial asylum? Who needs this financial instrument of last resort? And how can we guarantee that they're not going to get censored when they need uh, help? So why privacy for Bitcoin? Privacy is the nonviolent way that we achieve censorship resistance and we undermine authorities that seek to promote unfreedom. Privacy is the way that we say we're going to help those that need help um, without, without engaging in violence and by uh, sort of giving, you know, letting them use the tools of mathematics and, and, and software. Um, I think this is a really wonderful uh, uh, painting. Uh, I didn't draw it. This is a Banksy. I'm sure everyone's familiar. Um, and there's a bigger claim, which is that for Bitcoin to survive, we need privacy because if we don't have privacy, we risk some other property called fungibility. Fungibility is the property where any one Bitcoin that you have is as good as any other Bitcoin. When I talked about that $20 bill, if I gave you a 20 US dollar bill, it's as good as any other bill, with one exception. If it's counterfeit, then it's not. But it doesn't matter that that bill might have seen a lot of nefarious things. Those things don't, don't matter. That $20 bill can be used as, and always has that $20 value. So for good money, we need this property of fungibility. We need for, for anyone with one Bitcoin to have that power to spend one Bitcoin without having to lose 80% of the value of that Bitcoin because that Bitcoin is a tainted Bitcoin, is a dirty Bitcoin, is a bad Bitcoin. We need this property of fungibility. And, 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 and these three things are really kind of tying them together. And Wasabi Wallet's trying, trying to bridge this gap to make this, this possible. <laughs>